As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's right. eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody. For whoever wants to listen, I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only Scootsy Magootsy. What's up, dude? Every once in a while, I get the urge to just like lay down on the couch and do the podcast and lay down for him. Like a therapy session? Yeah, that. but that's the problem. As soon as I do that, I feel like you're going to feel like you've got power over me like a therapist. Yeah, probably. You're going to start asking me like intrusive questions. I would. Maybe that would be my like, actual chance to get some, some real answers out of you instead of deflection and sarcasm. You've gone to therapy. Have you ever laid down on the couch? I never have, no. I did it. Did you really? Yeah. How was it? It was great. Dude. Was it? Yeah. It seems I don't much know more what freeing. it was. It's, it's sort of like disarming. I don't That's know. what I mean. Yeah, I feel like it'd be a lot more freeing. I'd be more relaxed, open to sharing. Yeah. Because you know, especially when you start out with therapy, like it takes a little while to You're warm up. A little up. nervous. Sure. But yeah, I don't know. But well, I'm not going to do that here. Well, I, look, if if it makes you feel better, if you think you can podcast better from a horizontal form <laughs> horizontal form yeah no i feel like honestly and and look we're gonna get into beverly hills in just a bit but specifically with a show like beverly hills when there's so much chaos going on and we have to talk about a lot of different things i feel like if i was in lay down position i wouldn't care i feel like yeah whatever let oh. it go i think we do need to test this theory at some point not today no no i no, need no. to be prepped for this one but uh i do feel like there's something here that we might have to explore we might have to do it when we have to get into the valley Oh, dude. I'm just going to be so upset that we even have to talk about it. I'm already upset that we have to watch it. The trailer came out. I, what is with the trailer? People are talking about it like it's good. I like thought it, looked, it was. Oh, God. Dude, here's you the guys thing, are though. all being fooled. No, but here's the thing. First of all, I'm not being fooled. I do not have high hopes for this show whatsoever. I will say the trailer was fine. Like It did look somewhat captivating, but at the same time, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's, right. it's Jax being an asshole, Brittany getting mad at Jax. I never had a concern on whether or not these two could have drama on camera. I don't think anybody did. The The problem doesn't lie so much in them. It does in the fact that I don't need Jax Taylor as the main character of anything. Yeah. My biggest issue is the, the castmates surrounding them. What's their st- I don't know shit about them. I don't think I'm going to care about them. And if this is the driving force behind the show is watching Jax be a dick to his wife, like, I'm good. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. It's actually really funny because uh, this makes no sense that we're going into Beverly Hills, but we're talking about the goddamn valley. Uh, I was talking They're to somebody. They're both in California. Okay, there we go. Thank you. I need You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I was talking to somebody today about the Valley, and I went to Google because I keep forgetting the exact day that it's airing, even mm-hmm. though I should remember because it's Vanderpump Day next week. I Googled it, and I just typed in the Valley, and then it like, auto-filled to Bravo. It doesn't take you to, you know how like on Google it'll show it, and then like the cast underneath yeah. it or whatever. It takes you to Jax Taylor. No. I swear to God, it takes you just to Jax Taylor, his bio. He probably like, loves Jax that, Taylor, too. age 44, like all this shit. And I'm like... Why? Why? And then I did it with a bunch of other shows. They all show up the show. The only one on Bravo that only shows a person immediately is the Valley. That's so weird. Riddle me that, Batman. I don't have an answer for you, Robin, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think I would be the Riddler in that situation, but yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're Robin. Um, I don't know. I, I think that... Look, the one thing we're going to get out of this that is inevitable, and this is going to be a lot more fun for me, there's going to be a rant. Yep. I'm definitely going to rant about Jax. The difference is Jax will respond. That guy yeah. is unhinged when it comes to comments and stuff. What if we take a different approach and instead of getting mad about it, we just make fun of him? We could do either. Okay. He will respond. I don't think to you're going to be able to do that, but okay. I will not. Yeah. I will not because I hold it in when I watch the show. This is my chance to get it off of my chest. I'm just saying this could start a real feud. I'm here for that. That's fair. Yeah, I think I'm going to put together like a – a little comedy bit. Little Jax Taylor little roast. Stand up, yeah, a little stand-up comedy session, just ripping them apart. I mean, you don't have to do much. Just post a picture of them and let the commenters go to war. Oh, I was going to do it on the podcast. But yeah, we could do that too. No, no, I know. I'm just saying, yeah. like, that's probably the easiest target for a roast because he's an idiot. Yeah. This is a good way to start a podcast. I like this. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Yeah. This feel, we're back, look, we're back in the stew for the first time in a week. No. Nope. You said that before. I said What do you mean, bro? No. We're back in the stew. 
We're just a couple, couple of, of beef stew. A couple of bros stewing right here. Yeah, I don't care. Sometimes for we it. are, yeah. Yeah, um, that's actually true. But yeah, I mean, let's let's not waste any more time. Let's get into Beverly Hills. But before we do that, yeah, we want to talk to you about something special. We've got another live show. Oh, wow, you you paused. I was I was spitting my dip out. That was bad. No, we we've, we've got another live show May third Friday night in D.C. at the Union Stage. We're wasting no time here. We had our Philly show last week. It was electric. It was fun. If you didn't go, you missed out. You stink. You're a loser. Wow. But you can make it up to us oh. by going to the show in D.C. <laughs> what a weird approach. You gotta grill them. You know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you gotta make them feel like shit. <laughs> I guess we'll see if it works. Yeah, it's a new, a new marketing ploy. We'll see how it works. And then I'll come up with something else for Boston. By the way, Boston, you need to get your tickets now because we are very close to selling out yep. already. And that show is still three months away. Yeah, we're like... Less, or it's it's more than three months away and it's almost sold out. We just got a message today that somebody bought a bunch of tickets there. There was, I think, realistically speaking, there might be 20 to 25 tickets left. Yeah. Period. And there's three months to go. We have sold 25 tickets in a day before. So this is not our marketing ploy. The marketing ploy we're doing now, as Shooter said, is making fun and grilling. So this is not a marketing ploy. This is us simply sharing information. The show is going to sell out very soon. So get your tickets before it does so you don't miss out. Come hang out with us in Boston. Come hang out with us in D.C. That one's a much bigger venue. I want to fill that place up. I want to show the world what the Brav Bros fans can do. How about that for a marketing ploy? That sounds good. Yeah, let's get everybody jazzed up instead of tearing them down. How about that? A little bit of both should yeah. work out well. But uh, as Shooter mentioned, it is Beverly Hills Day, and it is part two of the reunion. And uh, what did you think? So part one was was good. It was captivating. How about part two? A uh, little more chaotic, but still not that bad. Yeah, You could agreed. still track what was going on, and, and as we've said many, many times about these reunions, it's so hard from a podcasting standpoint to keep track of what's going on so that we can figure out which segment we're going into which segment and whatever and so on and so forth. But it was a little easier to track. And I feel like it's get it's been getting better, honestly, across the board for these reunions. I don't know if we thank Andy or people kind of settled down a little bit, maybe. I don't know. I think it's probably just a coincidence. I would say it's just a we have not had one in a while that's been a total blowout where everyone just starts screaming over each other. We had that stretch, was it last year? There was like three reunions in a row that the first or second episode was simply chaos. There was nothing to follow. It was hard to talk about. So this has been more pointed. And maybe it's because, again, not a ton happened over this season, but I like that we are addressing, Andy's doing a really good job of addressing the questions directly. He's not like, this is the wrong word for it because I don't think he is one, but he's not pussyfooting around at all. That is a phrase that we used for Andy last year. Yes, it was. I don't think he's doing it now. I think he's being very direct. The The questions are straight to the point. He's trying to get answers. And that could also be because he's dealing with Dorit and you're not going to get a straight answer out of her ever. You're dealing with Kyle. You're not going to get a straight answer out of her. So maybe with this cast in general, he's more direct just to try to pull it out of him. But it's working. And I think that this is a good way to go about most reunions is just like, instead of so-and-so ask this, what do you think of this? Let's just say... This was an issue all season. What do you think about it? Yeah. And that is kind of what he's doing, even with the uh, the Twitter questions that rolled in. He's saying this was an issue all season. Here's four tweets about that issue. Yeah, I like it a lot. And that's great, because it doesn't give us too much time. Somebody like Dorit, who's just going to keep talking and talking in circles. Or repeat the question. Or repeat, all. Yeah, like all of those things. And I'll give everybody else credit, because they're not talking over each other. They're not jumping in when they're not supposed to. Anna Marie is not talking at all, which is good. Um her one comment today sucked, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? She's got to get a comment in once an episode, I guess. But why do you have to try to make it a dig? Just answer the question. Instead, she tries to be like, oh, I'm going to get one over here. I I don't personally do that in my life. Talk about other people's money or money in general. I know a lot of very, 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 yeah, very, how many very, times did very, 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 very wealthy people. Yeah. Guess what? This is Beverly Hills. So does everybody else in this room. Sutton may have more money than the people you're talking about. She's like, fuck it, wealthy. So I just don't understand. She's don't by understand. a horse wealthy. She's She is. She's by a horse on a Tuesday wealthy. Not just by a horse. She's like, hmm, I'm going to get a horse today and goes and buys a you horse. think the day of the week really matters that much? Yeah, because I think if it's a bigger decision, you'll go on a weekend to like see the horse, process it. If it's a Tuesday purchase, you're like, oh, yeah, by the way, I bought a horse last night. And I that- think you're belittling the situation. I think that she spent a lot of time finding that horse. 
I do too. I'm saying she has the money to just say fuck it on a Tuesday and go buy a horse. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that she went. What is this? What are we doing? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. I didn't know if I wanted to keep going or not. It's not that big of a deal. No. Can we just start with the reunion, yeah, let's please? Just do it. But we jump back into the reunion and we pick up where we left off, and that's discussing Kyle and her relationships this season, specifically hers with Dorit. And this caused a lot of tension between the two, unspoken tension, apparently, because Dorit just felt a distance in between her and Kyle this season. We watched it happen. It's all being attributed to the Kathy shit last year, where Dorit spoke up during all of that shit between Kyle and Kathy and saying that Kathy just wants a little bit of support. And we both agreed last year it was kind of fucked up and out of nowhere. If you're Kyle's friend, why are you jumping to her sister's aid right now? I don't think that Dorit actually understands what Kyle is saying. She focuses on the fact that Kyle snapped at her as soon as she went into it. And I guess Dorit thinks that she was being supportive or trying to like mitigate the situation. Like, that's what she's implying, but that's not what we saw. Even no, Sutton, not jumped, at all. Sutton jumps in and says, that's what Dorit was trying to do. She's trying to support. I was like, whoa, whoa, no, she I wasn't. I don't think she was at all. No. She was trying to take Kathy's side, which rightfully so, Kyle clapped back. And look, we've seen Kyle do that to a lot of her friends. It looks like that's going to be a big point for the next episode when she's talking to Sutton about how she treats her friends. But we'll wait for that for the next episode. For this, I think it was completely in her own right to snap at Dorit. Stay the fuck out of this if you're not going to support me. I and then to not talk to her for a couple of months after because we saw that Dorit was taking Kathy's side because, again, Dorit is one of those people who is very afraid of Kathy, and we'll get more of that next episode. I just don't really understand it. And Dorit trying to play it like I was supporting you in that moment is nuts. It was. And that's this is the one part of the episode probably I can agree with Kyle. Probably the first part of the entire season I can agree with Kyle. But, yeah, in that one specific moment... Dorit did not have your back, and she was rightfully called out for it. Yep. But moving on from there, we're still on Kyle's shit, and we get to the sobriety and the weight loss and the working out and all of these different things. And the big question was, like, did Morgan influence this sobriety in any way, shape, or form? And while she may have been there to help her through it and discuss things with her, I don't think that that was the root of it, or else it wouldn't have stuck because Kyle is remaining sober and doing a very good job being sober, which is awesome to see. But we did address, which I'm glad it brought, like, <clears throat> but we did address, and I'm glad they brought it up, the fact that the whole group was making jokes about Kyle's sobriety the whole time, and the one thing I can give credit to Garcelle here, very lightly, because it was still fucked, and I'm going to get into that in a second, but she's like, you know, had she had an actual problem, we wouldn't be making those jokes. Fair. However, you have no idea what happens behind closed doors. You are assuming that she didn't have a serious problem because she hasn't shown anything to prove that she had a serious problem. However, there's a, a lot, a lot of functional alcoholics out here that you would have no idea that they drink. So regardless of the intention, regardless of what you're trying to do, be funny, whatever, just don't make jokes about it because you never fucking know. I'm glad that they addressed it though because that was something that pissed me off all season. And then we get to the working out and the excessive working out and all that stuff. And look, We've discussed it all at length the entire season. We don't have to get into it too much. But I think I think the main point that everybody's trying to make to Kyle and what's going over Kyle's head, the issue is not the specifics. It's not the fact that it was working out, stopping drinking. It was the excess. It was the fact that it was so much, so fast, full throttle, which would imply that something serious is happening in your life while we are on a show where you're supposed to share your life, you're not talking about shit. So the whole group is wondering what's going on. It's leading to speculation. You're getting defensive, Kyle, when instead of offering an explanation, talking to your friends, talking to the audience who is watching you, trying to understand what's going on. Yeah, I actually disagree. I think that Kyle is... well. Hold on, before you get mad. No, no, I know. Not actually I disagree. Know. I know what you mean. I think that she knows exactly why they're doing it. I think she's playing dumb and she's oh, deflecting yeah, right. because this is Kyle. She's the queen of deflection. And she starts talking about, like, I started working out when I was 15 because I have to. Right. That's not the fucking point, Kyle. You are not addressing the elephant in the room and you never do. And to sit there and say, and I know that she says this a little bit later, but to sit there and say, well, I share things on screen all the time. My daughter... We had her second birthday. She was learning to drive, and now she's going to college. You can't tell me that I didn't share anything. It's like, 
Those aren't cool things to share. No. I'm sorry. But you know what? Yeah, maybe some people like that. And it's like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And you can look back and say, well, my children grew up on reality TV. So there's a lot more footage of it. And it's kind of nice to see. And it makes me sad that they're not younger anymore. Like things like that that we usually see. And that's how New Jersey used to be too. You used to see all the kids growing up. And that was great. That's not what we're talking about. No. You finally, finally have a real storyline. And you deflect the entire goddamn season. And then you're hypocritical in saying that nobody else is sharing anything. You're the one who's not sharing anything. You put a little check mark on top because that was right. I'm putting a 16. You also had that? No, I'm putting a 16 so I remember where to cut this because I'm going to oh, there you go. that because it was a great point. Like, Thank you. You're welcome. That's 100% <laughs> correct, and that's what we've seen. And I think that she uses it as a cop-out. I've been here for 13 years. You've seen all of these things in my life. Yeah, sure. But like Shooter said, that's not the juicy stuff and on these shows like that's the point of these shows those other scenes are a reprieve from the nonsense that's when we're like oh they do have a heart because look at them with their kids they're great mothers they're great fathers whatever that's the reprieve that's the humanity part that we talk about a lot those scenes are important as a supplement as a complement to the other shit we need to see everything else too especially when it's all going on and you have been on this show for 13 years, so you should know that. And the fact that she's using this as a deflection, she's trying to turn and spin this narrative as though she's the victim. Nobody was asking her how she was. No one was doing this. Yeah, they were. They were asking you all season, what about me? Why didn't you come give me a hug? They don't know what to give you a hug about because every time it's brought up, you get defensive, deflect, and change the subject. Yeah, So yeah, that's a really good point. Anyway... Kyle's big defense was that if I was reckless with any of these things, whatever. Sutton immediately jumps in and says, well, you were reckless. And she brings up the implications for the entire season about her drinking, eating disorders, a lot of very personal things that you're not supposed to imply about other people because it's rude and invasive and you don't know what they're going through. And Kyle, this is where it starts. This is where the bullshit really starts to hit. She is deflecting, deflecting, deflecting every single thing. She's like, I never said that. I never said you had a drinking problem. I never said that. And thank God Sutton points out, once again, you've been on the show for 13 years. You know how to play the game. Yep. You are you know exactly what you're doing. You're giving enough to put little seedlings out there. You're setting it up so that other people infer what's going on. That's how rumors start. That's how you get to this much bigger, broader topic. Now we've got Teddy fucking Mellencamp, who cannot live with the fact that she's irrelevant now going on Watch What Happens Live and saying that Sutton keeps vodka in her purse 24-7. Well, she has a pretty cool podcast. No, she doesn't. You know, I <laughs> don't even get me started. They, again, <laughs> you know what? It's the perfect example. Her segment on Watch What Happens Live is the perfect example of that podcast. They just say shit. Yeah. They just say shit, whether it's true or not, and then they get called out, then they'll apologize and backpedal, but it's the internet. It's already out there. Now people are going to take that and run with it and be like, oh, Sutton does have a drinking problem. Teddy Mellencamp said so. Well, I, I guess the... Uh, the point of reference for all of that, as much as I don't want Teddy Mellencamp to be involved in this at all and anything that she says should not be relevant in a reunion, she is close to Kyle. So if Teddy's saying that and you're sitting there and we have footage of you sitting with Dorit and, yeah, Crystal was there too and Crystal didn't speak up either. You're sitting there laughing about the fact that she might put vodka in her coffee in the morning. That's a problem. Yep. You're not saying, no, she doesn't have a drinking problem. You're insinuating that she might have a drinking problem. And when people call you out and say that you're saying it specifically, you can't play the semantics game. Not when you haven't done anything to stop it. And you are insinuating and you've made multiple comments about that. Like, have some sort of perspective in your own mind to understand what you've said about somebody else. And then when it comes up at a reunion, you can't just deny it like that because we've seen otherwise. That's the the hardest part, I think, for me watching this is like, we have clips. We have clips. We have clips. We have clips. We've seen you say these things. We've heard you say these things. You did. This is what you did all season. But the reason that she can't cop to it, and she never will, by saying, yeah, I did plant those seedlings all season, you are also admitting that this is your entire friendship with Sutton. This is all you ever do. You belittle her. Watch the scenes of those two interact. I've called this out for two years now yeah. watching those. They're ridiculous. Anything Sutton says, she acts like it's not a big deal. She kind of laughs it off. It's almost like she's like, okay, whatever, Sutton. Your problems aren't real problems, and you don't know how the world works. She always acts as though Sutton's her dumb little sister. There's no respect there. It's not a mutually respectful friendship. Even in the scenes where it's like a touching moment, and Sutton goes to a confessional, and she's like... I feel like we really connected here. Like, we really broke through. You go to Kyle's confession, she's like, yeah, you know, I said whatever just to calm her down. <laughs> yeah. 
And that happens all the time. And my one of my biggest problems with this scene specifically, Dorit is still on Kyle's side. That's crazy. What are you doing, Dorit? She doesn't have a friend. She's, she's know, fighting for dude. her life out here. Kyle sent you the most manipulative text messages the day before to try to protect her own ass because she knows that you've got a little information and you're going to come for her. And even Eric is saying, I want Kyle's feet held to the fire. I want to see her squirm. I want to see her struggle because I had to deal with that last year. Why are you defending Kyle? Let her suffer. If you're this butthurt about your friendship that went away and you have so many questions about how she treats her friends, including you, why are you defending her? Mm -hmm. Let her die. Kyle goes, I told everyone I was having a hard year in my marriage. And we get the clip of her with Eagle Woman. And yeah, she touches on that briefly. And there's other times during the season she touches on it briefly. But Dorit points out, you never explained it to me. You never explained it. Kyle's response is, well, you never took the time to call me off of camera. Okay, maybe true. Don't know. But at the same time, she did address it on camera. And Kyle keeps getting pissed off in this reunion about people bringing things up on camera. What the fuck are but we that's doing the other here? Thing. We didn't even know that Kyle and Dorit were beefing because as soon as the cameras picked up, Kyle acted like Dorit was a friend. Bingo. So what are you doing? Everything that you do is for the show. This is what makes no sense to me, and it's a fucking oxymoron. And it just keeps going back and forth and back and forth. Kyle talks about the show all the time. Like, we know that you do so much for the show. We know that you put on this whole persona for the show. But then when it comes down to it, you bash the show. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't You're either. not sharing the things that are going on in your life because you're doing something completely different for the show. Like, I, I have no idea where she stands on this damn show. I don't either because she always skates around what's going on. She yeah, never she's just says me fucking insane. This is what happened and why. And if she's saving it for the reunion, okay, I guess. But at the same time, I don't we, think she is though. I don't understand the game plan. I don't get the it. Game plan is deflect and deflect and deflect and then hope that somebody else starts saying something stupid so that you can attack them. But even in the the text that she sent to Dorit, like the way she talks about the show is condescending. It's like, we don't have to do this on camera. It's like, this is what the fucking show's for. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. I'm don't not be on the goddamn show. That's it. Don't be on the show. If you're going to bash the show all the time, you're belittling us. We're yeah. sitting here watching this goddamn show, paying you to watch this damn show, <laughs> and you're not giving us good effort. Technically, I am paying, because it's on Peacock, and I'm paying my subscription exactly, service. Exactly, yeah. But it's just, it's so frustrating. But the line that really, really grinded my gear, let me tell you, and I haven't had my gear ground in a while. This one grinded my gear a lot. What makes you so entitled to know the details? (laughs) What do you mean? This is the point of all Bravo shows. The entire network is built on us being entitled enough to know the fucking details. If you don't want, I'm not going to keep saying it. Because Shooter just said it. If you don't want to talk about it, get off the fucking show. That's fine. Go away. But don't go on the show and say, who are you to be privy to this information? <laughs> like, this is what... It, and it wouldn't... I, I don't know. It would probably still bother me. But it wouldn't bother me nearly as much if we didn't know that Marisa... Sh- Marie- Mauricio, fuck. <laughs> Mauricio. You know why I said, somebody said Maurice at some point. In time. I know. I don't know who it I was. I heard it. It was. But it's like, it's it's incepted my mind at this that's point. That's so funny. I heard it today, I think, on the show. Uh, who said, I think Dorit may have said it. Anyway, somebody said it. I don't fucking care. Mauricio is sharing so much more on his goddamn Netflix show, and you're sitting here bashing your own show and saying that people shouldn't be privy to the things going on in your life on a reality TV show. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. But then she she goes a step further to belittle Sutton's storyline this season. She's like, what? You had a cashmere and a horse and completely negates everything else that she's gone through this season. And look, we've talked about it before and we love Sutton here, but we've said multiple times, can she carry a season? No, that's not her role on the show. And that's fine. She did a good job of it this year because she had to. No one else was stepping up to the plate other than Erica, which we keep catching shit in the reviews because we haven't watched... That fucking documentary. I know, dude. <laughs> but to be fair, though, I, I don't, I'm not Erica's biggest fan after this episode either, so it doesn't really... Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. But at the same time, like, with the Sutton stuff, we watched her have a transformative year where she has relinquished the bonds that her husband has placed on her and where she seemed to be kind of pushed down and would follow this man, whatever he said she would do. She found her independence again. She stepped up and became a new Sutton. She let go of a lot of things in the past. That's an amazing storyline. We watched her talk about her store with pride, the horse, all of the little shit. Were the actual events that groundbreaking, other than obviously spreading Merce's ashes? 
No, like she bought a horse and she's talking about her store that she opened four and a half years ago. But the store made it five years after the pandemic. That's fucking amazing, especially considering she's coming from being in a marriage where the husband did everything. She got to show her daughter at the end of the season. Look what I was able to do this year. I'm, I'm finally independent again. I'm strong. Fuck yeah. Great storyline. Let's not take that storyline and make it about this big because Kyle's pissed off and deflecting. But it's not even that. She has no perspective on the rest of the cast. Like as far as if we were to power rank who shared what this season, Kyle would be at the bottom of the list. Garcelle doesn't do a goddamn thing on this show. And she still <laughs> shared more than Kyle did. And we all know it. Everybody talks about it. Everybody knows that Garcelle doesn't do anything on the show. And yeah, she had a couple of moments with her boys and whatever. And like we talked about it. She did the bare minimum. Yeah. Let's be honest. Kyle is still below Garcelle yep. because you have so much more to talk about and you're refusing to talk about it. And for you to sit at the reunion now and belittle everybody else's input, if Sutton didn't have the season that she had, everybody probably would have stopped watching. Well, they probably would have continued to watch just in case Kyle shared something. But if you're sitting there and you're just waiting to see if Kyle's ever going to share, you're not going to watch it. We watched 16 episodes of her get close and not share yeah. anything. But Kyle has one line where she says, you came into this season to come after me, Sutton. That was your goal this season. No, she she did what Sutton always does in, in moments that maybe she shouldn't have said certain things. She sort of slipped and fell into yeah. going after you. Yeah, exactly. That was not her intention this season, but you gave her the ammo to do so, and she stepped up in certain moments. But it gets back to the drinking problem thing, and this is just peak Dorit. And this is what you get for this entire episode when she is addressed about everything. She's asked, did you insinuate, just flat out, did you insinuate that Sutton had a drinking problem? Did I insinuate? She repeats the question. Did I do that? Hmm. Then Crystal grills her a little bit. She's like, I don't know. Then Sutton grills her. She's like, I don't know. I can't know that. I don't know you. Well, with that logic, we could say that about the world. I don't know if you have a drinking problem. Like, imagine that logic where you just walk up and be like, hmm, technically you could have one. I don't know you. But technically, you could. You're still doing it. You're Somehow still saying, I don't know, is worse than just saying, yeah, I do think you have a drinking problem. It is. At least that is definitive. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. She's if leaving. you think that I have a drinking problem, we can talk about it. If you don't think that I have a drinking problem, then keep your mouth shut. If you say, I don't know, you're an idiot. Like I, That's what I don't understand. We get this out of Dorit every year. I'm back on the train of get her the fuck off the show. Because she does nothing. And then she comes up in the reunion, and she talks, and she talks, and she talks. Do we ever actually get anything out of her? No. No. Never. No, just skates we got to talk about the goddamn robbery again. Like, I don't want to do it. I'm done with it. We have to. I know, but we still, like, to. and it's the same answer that she gave last year, and she doesn't understand that it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't, but moving past that, we get to PK and Dorit, which is something I actually want to talk about and something I wish was discussed way, way, way more during the season. That would have been a captivating storyline. That's actually something that I think a lot of people want to see because when we do see these two together or interacting with one another, it's all love. Boobalish. It's always love. You never get to know what's actually going on. You get snippets when they actually get mad at each other and say some real shit. Mainly in confessionals for Dorit with PK, you see it in front of a fucking therapist while he's yeah. drinking a beer and eating a slice of pizza because he's an asshole. My, my whole world has shifted as far as how I feel about the husbands of Beverly Hills. We used to love watching scenes with Mo and PK. Now I don't, I don't give a shit. PK's a douchebag. Yeah, like that guy stinks on ice. But we start talking about like her recap of this season, and when you see those scenes back to back to back. I think that's when I was like, wow, fuck this dude. Like, PK literally has no remorse for anything that she's gone through. Yeah, I mean, if we label it out, we've got the pretty woman thing, which was for PK, not for Dorit. Yep. We have him sitting down with a therapist, belittling her, her PTSD. Saying, that saying her PTSD is obnoxious. obnoxious, yeah. And then we get to see, towards the end, him just staying in London the whole time and ignoring everything that she's doing. So, yeah, you see all of those things. Again, it still comes back to Dorit and not showing it. Look, the confessionals are the confessionals. They're great. But you have to show up on camera. You have to do it in person. And if you and PK are going through a rough patch, you should be calling him out on camera. Yes. Who the fuck cares? He says enough dumb shit on camera and on the phone, on FaceTime, in front of the cameras that you should be calling him out then and there. And the rest of us would say, all right, we get it, Dorit. He's an asshole. You're going back at him. And his answers are obnoxious. Yes, we would. Obnoxious. We would empathize with you. Instead, we just think you're living in your own little world, and then you're making dumb comments to other people. So that's why we just never get enough out of Dorit, and it drives me crazy to the point where, what, this is five straight seasons of this bullshit? Like, enough. Well, look who she learned from. 
Uh, yeah, I know. It's Her best friend Kyle taught her the ropes. We don't actually talk about anything. We give hints here and there, but let's not discuss it on camera because who, who, who thinks they're entitled to that information? Not I. Well, and then she plays the semantics game of, yeah, we weren't living separate lives. I was just living somewhere separately with all of my stuff. He was living in the Beverly Hills Hotel with Boy George. <laughs> <laughs> Is look, she described living separate lives and said that's not living separate lives, so that's stupid. And for you to say that things got and they took a turn for the worse afterwards, like we know PK stayed in fucking London for months and months, then came back and still wasn't living at home. We know it got worse. Talk to us about that. Instead, we get nothing about specifics of how it got worse, and we get her saying, which I don't believe this for a fucking second, that they're better than ever. No, you sat down and you've realized there's nothing else you can really do. I mean, I guess it's good that she didn't sign a prenup. I guess. Maybe you go for that. I don't know, because everyone says that he doesn't have money. But we don't know. We know nothing about them. He's got the insurance money from all the purses that he stole from her. Yeah. (laughs) The fact that she says that everything's better than ever, I think we can put that to bed pretty quick because there was just recently a post. Somebody took a picture of PK walking into a bar in London, shocker, without a wedding ring on. Now, does lack of a wedding ring always mean that something's going on? No, there could be a a very real... something happen with his finger, like his finger got too fat or something? Who the fuck knows? (laughs) Who knows what what their excuse is? I'm just saying... There are instances where if someone gets caught without a ring, like once you'd be like, oh, is something going on? Like, no, nah, probably not. Maybe just usually not. if they're walking into a gym, it's like, okay. Like, yeah, you know, like there's instances, sure. But because of the emphasis that was placed on this season throughout the whole season, the paparazzi with Mo and Kyle, and the emphasis of lack of wedding ring, PK knows that. Dorit knows that. So him not wearing one sends more of a statement because of what we've just watched for the past six months of our lives. Maybe they're better than ever and they renewed their vows and he got a new wedding ring and it was in the mail. That's a sweet sentiment. (laughs) It's not true. My little bubblish. Now you're doing it. You're doing what they do. That's probably what she told people when they asked. (laughs) That's exactly what I was thinking. No, he bought a diamond studded wedding ring for himself and it needs to be sent over by a Brinks truck Oh, my God. Did you see that guy get robbed from the Brinks truck no. in Texas? No. Yeah, dude held him at gunpoint and took his pants off, which is weird. I don't know why he took his pants off. Well, what are you going to do? You can't fight somebody with your pants off, right? No, he he made the Brinks guy take his pants off. Oh. He held him at gunpoint and said and like ripped his pants off. Wanted to make sure he wasn't packing any heat, you know what I mean? If that's a dick joke about a poor man getting it's robbed. A, it's <laughs> a dick joke and a gun joke, yeah. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <Ha-ha>. But... <laughs> Yeah, sorry, side note, that was just pretty crazy, but it comes full circle because the next thing we talk about is Dorit getting robbed, and I know you don't want to talk about it, but I forgot entirely that she got robbed of ten grand at Marshall's by three men that followed her in, that targeted her, according to her. Look, we've we've been sensitive to this topic. We make jokes here and there. I do think that she was genuinely robbed at gunpoint in her house. The details, as Garcelle points out, are a little weird. I still stand by that as well. There's some things that I wish I had answers for. The phone, the fact that nothing else was taken. I do believe this wholeheartedly. Dorit had no idea. That's all I'm going to say. I think so too. And there's a couple more things that don't add up now that she keeps talking about it. And again, like I do think that we would feel differently if Dorit would answer in a certain way. And I don't want to say like how somebody who went through something like that should answer. But we've been doing it for two years now. I'm kind of tired of it, so I'm going to say it. She should be getting mad at somebody like Garcelle and not questioning why she's questioning other things. It is fucking weird that they left the phone out there. You can say it's a miracle, but I don't give a shit because I was able to get my phone and call my my husband. That's what I needed to do. I'm not going to fucking question a couple of robbers going out there. Like, get angry about it because it's a weird question. Like, yes, we understand that it's weird, acknowledge that it's weird, and then get pissed off because Garcelle's questioning it. That would ring true to me. That's Instead, she's like beating around the bush and she's like, why are you even questioning those things? Because they're weird as hell. Yeah. That's why. The other problem that popped up here is she said that her jewelry wasn't taken because she had just gotten back from going overseas for a little while and the jewelry wasn't in the right place. How the fuck are the robbers going to know what the where right the place? jewelry is in what right place? Ooh. They're going to ransack everything and try to find the jewelry because they know somebody who lives in a house like that, who looks like you, has jewelry. And if they it was premeditated, they know that you have jewelry. So they're going to look for it. Did you say ramsack? Yeah. Ransack. 
All those ramsack. I love ramsack. No, yeah. it's ransack. R a n s a c k. Oh, okay. But ramsack is ramsack is good. Word. Yeah, we, right. that's our dictionary there word. We go. Let's keep adding ramsack. Let's keep adding them. But that's <laughs> when she said. And look again. I don't want to talk about it. And I'm so tired of hearing about it. Obviously, I'm still listening. When she said that, my ears perked up. What do you mean the right place? That's interesting. I didn't even catch that. Weird. I think the best point you made there was the fact that she's trying to normalize everything. Right. Instead of acknowledging, yeah, it's fucking weird, but he left it. I don't know what to tell you. Thank God he did so I could call PK. Instead yeah. of trying to be like, why do you think this is such a big deal? He left the phone. Have you been robbed? You don't know what the, the protocol is. That's very normal in a robbery, okay? When they robbed me at Marshall's, they left my purse outside. <laughs> that's mean. That's mean. Yeah, that's that's mean. That's mean. I, look, I'm just, I'm at a certain point where I'm frustrated with it as well. I'm not trying to take away from the experience. I am not saying that she didn't go through hell or PTSD and all of those things. During this whole season, we've said multiple times, the lack of empathy coming from her husband on the matter is upsetting, it's shocking, it's off-putting, all of those things. I'm not trying to make the situation seem smaller than it is. I believe she went through it all. But there's so many question marks on it. And like you said, if there was more direct answers or acknowledgement of the strange things that are going on with it, it would make more sense rather than trying to explain it away. Like, yeah, that's really normal. The jewelry wasn't in the right place. Huh? Just one, like, who the fuck cares would go so far. It would. We could have done it last year, and we wouldn't have had to talk about it again this year. That would hit pretty hard, but yeah. I'm curious to see what happens with PK and Dorit, which is a shame, because that means that she's definitely coming back next season, and that's what this is setting up, honestly. Like, that's what this offseason is going to set up. There's enough there to bring her back. I hope this, and this is the, the ca not cautiously optimistic person, this is the serial optimist in me. Yep. I want her to come back next year if she does come back and start talking about things like actually open up a little bit. Wouldn't that be wild? Wouldn't that be worth watching if Dorit comes back and now all of a sudden she's explaining things rather than deflecting things? I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe PK was the one who was blocking her from actually talking maybe. about stuff. I don't know. Possibility. Maybe. I'm still stuck on serial optimist and thinking like you open a box of lucky charms and there's a lot of marshmallows in there and you're like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's a serial optimist. Oh, Oh, that was You didn't get bad. that? Come on. I'm a dad, and that's a bad dad. Come on. You're not a dad. You can't make those Come stupid on. jokes. I don't know if I'm a dad. If I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. If there's any Magooters out there. Any babies born with a mustache, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But anyway, I did think that Garcelle's response to this sucked because you got caught in a lie. Like, you got... Not in a lie, but you got caught doing something shitty. Like, it was fucked up. And... I mean, I guess you can credit her that she never backs down, but at the same time, like, this would go a long way if you just said, yeah, you know what, watching that back, had I been robbed at gunpoint and you said that shit about me, I'd be really upset, so I'm sorry. She does say, I'm sorry, but it's my opinion. That's my opinion, and it doesn't it doesn't change anything. Like, it, It's so it, funny. It's fucking, that's rude. Yeah. That's fucking rude. It's like, definitely rude. Just because you have an opinion on something, like, she got robbed at gunpoint with her kids in the house. Like, Let's keep it in perspective a little bit here rather than just like, no, I'm entitled to my opinion. We all are, for like, sure. Somebody goes through a really bad divorce and your first reaction is, well, you weren't really weren't that good of a wife. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Like I, Don't worry I about me. You. I'm sorry for saying it, but, you know, <laughs> that's just my opinion. It's fucked up. It's like, it's no offense, so but you're a douchebag. Like, that's the same the same vibe. Like, you can't just drop a no offense and everything's no. okay. But Not everybody has the right to an opinion. Let's just, you can keep it inside. Just, well, you know, don't Everyone has down. a right to their own opinion for sure. Yeah, some people should. You shouldn't. can keep it in. You don't have yeah. to say it out loud. There's a time and a place. How about that? Fair. You can have your own opinion, but time and place. Fair. We do get to touch on PK with the random woman when he got a DUI, which I 1 million percent think is true. That's like the most believable thing ever. I don't know why, but that just like, I could see him like, oh, fuck. Just duck under the dash, honey. Make sure they don't see you here. What's that? Yeah, I'm Boy George's manager. <laughs> <laughs> but we get to talk about the Pretty Woman anniversary. I had no idea that Julia Roberts commented on this. Yeah. I missed that. How did I miss that? I love Julia Roberts. Well, we talked about that. No, I didn't. Oh. And if I did, I, you know my brain. I forgot it. That's fair, yeah. But to see it again, if I have seen it, I was like, oh, my God. Even she thinks it's weird. One the fact that you gave the necklace back and Dorit is defending it like he wanted to <laughs> stay true to the movie because that's what happened in the movie. Yeah, that's just like not a good answer. I actually liked the follow-up answer with 
well, look, if I'm going to pick something out that's $5 million, I want to be able to pick it out. I don't want Valid. EK to pick it out. That's fair. That makes sense. That's fair. Don't say he's trying to stay true to the storyline. Well, if he bananas. wants to stay true to the storyline, there's a lot more that has to go on in that a movie. A whole lot. Yeah. That, you know, we don't have to talk How about. How true to the storyline did he want to get? I'm saying. But that's, look, the whole thing, the whole PK surprise thing, and then he gets butt hurt because she doesn't like the surprise because she wants to talk about real shit. And that leads me again to think the whole reason she's so show shut, show shut off, yep. so shut off, is because of him. I think that he has conditioned her almost to be like, we're not discussing things, by, especially not on camera. Publish. Like, I just think that she has this, where she has to portray a certain image out to the world, and you get hints of it in the confessional, because PK's not present in the confessional. I, I mean, I, I think it goes way further than just camera. I think that he doesn't want to do it at all. I don't oh, no, think I, that he ever right, wants yeah. to talk about anything. I don't think he ever wants her to talk about anything. He just wants to go and do what... Like, you can see it. His body language, when the therapist shows up, he mm-hmm. walks over, he gets a slice of pizza before he even goes near the door. And when the therapist is just sitting there. Like, let me grab a beer and a slice of pizza. No, dude, this is something serious that we're going to handle right now. He doesn't want to do that. I don't think the cameras have anything to play. Yeah, obviously, it might exacerbate the situation, but he doesn't want to do it anyway. I agree with that. I actually think that's a good point, but... That's when we dive in to Kyle and Dorit's relationship again. And was Morgan Wade a factor in this? Probably. But at the same time, there was clearly a divide in this friendship for a while. I think that it's bullshit that Kyle is now claiming that they were never that close. And now we're backpedaling on the show where she's like, well, you are my close friend. You should have called. It's like, well, you said that you guys weren't that close, that it was exaggerated. So what is it? And we see this. The whole episode, Kyle says one thing and then immediately contradicts herself over and over and over again. I think the way that Kyle views friendships is you feel like you're close to me and I like that. I don't really feel that close to you. Oh, you think she does that with like, yeah, because if Sutton betrays her for something, she gets all pissed off and says, I I wish you were a closer friend and you should be there for me. But she'll never do that with Sutton. It's like same thing with Dorit. Like when Dorit chimed in last year, it's like, okay, if Dorit chimed in and supported Kathy, who she thinks she's actually friends with. And you got mad about that, but you're sitting there saying that we weren't actually friends and it was just on camera. You don't deserve to get mad about that. Agreed. But she's mad about it because she thinks that Dorit thinks that they're closer friends. Like, it's it's a really weird dynamic with Kyle and her friendship. And I hope, I think we will, at least with the Sutton aspect, get more into it next week. Because I need to find out how the fuck Kyle's brain ticks. Because it doesn't make any sense it to me. It makes no sense. This is the scene where she goes, I thought we were close enough that you'd call. Yeah. But in your previous confessionals and on watch what happens live and other interviews you've said like we're not that close so which one is it and then you backpedal again when i get like that i retreat i retreat you just said to reach out and talk but now you're saying that it would have been fruitless because you're not going to talk about it anyway because you lock yourself into a shell i retreat i need to be alone well you weren't alone because you were with morgan wade i mean alone in the metaphorical sense now we're playing the semantics game now we're what does it mean what's it all mean basil like i don't you know what that's from? Yeah. Yeah, right, nice. Of course, yeah. But I just don't get why this keeps happening. I don't understand it. And if it were any other situation where it's not reality TV, it would make more sense. Okay, you don't have to talk about this. It's not my business. But we're watching this. This is a reunion episode. This is your chance to address things rather than skate around the topics. And you're also talking to your potentially close friend, potentially not close friend. The Both of you are the queens of skating around things so at this point at the very least somebody somebody pushed the other person into fucking talking but the best part is you know what's going to happen the minute that they're done talking and somebody attacks kyle dorit's going to jump to her defense again because she doesn't know what else to do like i don't get the friendship i don't get how either of their brains work it's very frustrating to watch all we want answers all anybody on the couches wants is answers all andy wants is answers and they would do themselves so many favors if they just answered the question instead of repeating the question, figuring out a way around it, and pointing the blame elsewhere. Kyle always blames somebody else. It's never her fault. Somebody either didn't come to her defense, somebody didn't take the time to call, the close friends didn't care enough, she was trying to isolate and retreat. It's always elsewhere. And that's fucking insane when we've watched it. We watch this shit. This goes back to, you've been on the show for 13 years, Kyle. You should know there's a camera and a microphone present. So we see all this shit. So we're going to speculate. You can end the speculation by talking about it, but they're not going to. But we move on to Erica 
and her year, and obviously she had a great comeback season. Now, if you watch the documentary, you might not think so, as people keep telling us in the comments. <laughs> God forbid we talk about the show that we're watching. I know, I know, but whatever. Well, I think that's the thing that kind of just went completely over people's heads, is when we're sitting here talking about that, we're not saying that Erica Jane is all of a sudden a good person. No. We're saying from an entertainment standpoint, she was much more tolerable. She had a she good comeback sucked. year. Last year was awful to watch. The year before, I didn't care for her because she was just screaming at everybody. Mm -hmm. This year, she didn't do that. And look, yeah, we didn't talk about the earrings. We didn't talk about the fucking, all the things going on with Tom Girardi to a point that we got sick of it. She was just having a good time in her own little world, and it was pleasant to watch on a TV show that we watch for entertainment. That's it. It's not that deep. It, there are a lot of people on reality TV that are terrible fucking people, but I will sit here and say they are very fun to watch on TV. I, that's a, Yeah. Thank you for, for explaining that because- Mansplain. Is that a mansplain? It probably is. Maybe dude. you just mansplain. Now we're going to get bad reviews because I mansplain. You're going to get a one star for yeah. a mansplain. Dude. But no, I agree with you. I think that we watch it from an entertainment standpoint. And yes, if someone's a terrible person, we will call them out on it. We called out Erica all last year. At no point during this season did we say, wow, she seems like a great person now. She's really turned a new leaf. We said that she's had a great comeback season. She well, seems much lighter. And she's winning a lot of these cases. That's all just facts. And the bar was super low. It, the, I'm not even saying she had a great season. The bar. Because, let's be honest. She stayed out of fights most of the season. Yeah. She had a good moment with Denise, which was great. She had some other moments that she let roll off, which I thought were really good. But as far as an entertainment standpoint and pushing storylines and actually showing us stuff, I know that she can't show us stuff. And this is the best that we're going to get. And that's okay with me. Well, I'm we, all right with that. We get reminded that she can't show us yeah, stuff. They, did she they have a good talking. season? No, I, I don't. she didn't do anything. She, but they start trying to talk about the victims and her private lawyer that was gifting her $700,000 over the past year or two. And Andy's like, oh, you met with the victim. She's like, I did. Can you comment on that? No, I cannot. Uh, here we go again. Uh, we're doing it again now. And I don't need to do this. Can you better explain? Do it. No. And then she says, my paycheck was in one of those trust funds. It's like, oh, wait, what? But we're not going to talk about that either. But why are we diving back into this? And that this makes me worried for the next episode. Because if they're already grasping at straws, we don't need to talk about Erica and Tom anymore. And not because we're over it. We just know it's an ongoing thing and we're not going to get shit out of it. It's not vindicating her, saying she's innocent, any of those things. It's saying this is ongoing. We had to do this all of last year. Every fucking episode we had to play this game. I don't need to do it again. We didn't even talk about this th at all this year. Yeah. This never came up this during is, the season. And she does say that at one point in time that she can't talk about it because when you're going through ongoing legal proceedings, yeah, your no. lawyers tell you that you can't do this and you can't do that. So I decided to just keep my mouth shut and not talk about it the whole time. Okay, that's fine. You know, we're going to disagree with that and we can say you could show a little bit of remorse. I am now firmly back in the other hand thinking that she met with these victims because her lawyers recommended it because it looks good. She said that. She did it for good press. She said that it was recommended by my counseling. Yeah. So she didn't do it out of the goodness of her own counsel. heart. Counsel. Yeah. Counseling probably works too. She didn't do it out of the goodness of her own heart. She does it because she wants to look better so that she has a better chance of winning cases. Right. Everything she does is self-serving. That is Erica Jane. But she also doesn't pretend to think otherwise. She no, had she to have empathy explained to her in the second episode of the season. Okay? Yeah. We're not saying she's a great person. No. Never not. have. I'm just trying to hammer it home. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to hammer it home. We don't think she's a good person. We're going to get a one-star review regardless, but The anyway. other side's going to come out. <laughs> How dare you talk she's about her? She's the like greatest. That. One star. We can't win. She met with those victims. Okay. We can't win. But we end this episode with the Magic Mike recap and Sutton and Kyle's friendship again and... Here's what I think happened, and this is what Sutton says happened. I do think she genuinely went into that night expecting one thing, gets there, and she was overwhelmed by what she saw. I don't think she expected to, quote, see simulation of cunnilingus going on. <laughs> what she got I, honestly, I don't even know what the fuck to think anymore. It, it's gotten so evolved at this point it's where... It's not that deep. It's not that deep. It, it was still weird as hell. We can admit that it was weird as hell, and watching it unfold was... 
upsetting. She overreacted. She overreacted. She, I don't, there should be a stronger word for overreaction. Uh, uh, she hyper. I was going to say super reacted. Hyper yeah, reacted. Hyper-reacted. Yeah, actually, that might be a word. She hyper reacted to it. It was tough to watch. But now she's adding in the fact that she learned that her kids were going to have to move to England with her ex-husband. And he wasn't taking no for an answer. And there was all that going on. Okay. And, you know, we've heard that a million times with people having breakdowns on the show and they're like, you don't know what I went through today. It's like, okay, heard it before, but whatever. I just don't think that it was that big of a thing. And I guess what it's doing is it's leading us into a deeper conversation about Kyle and Sutton and their friendship. Maybe that's something that we watched unfold this year. So maybe that'll be it, but I don't know where the hell they're going with it. I mean, they start to dive into it a little bit because Sutton's pissed off about the, all you have is cashmere and a horse comment. Cause like, Oh, we can't talk about the horse now. It's like, that's not about the horse. It's not about the horse. It's this not is, about the pasta. Just, it's not about the pasta, but this is when I wish that Sutton was more articulate because I know what she's trying to say. You too. She's saying, I at least did something this year. So don't belittle the things that I brought to the show, Kyle, when you're actively avoiding things that you could easily talk about on the show. I don't like that she brought it back, you know, like half an hour later or whatever the fuck. I mean, they do these things all day. It could have been two hours later. See, I disagree a little bit because I you th- like that she brought it back up. Late? I do. I like that she brought it back up because she is stepping up and defending herself. And I don't think that she had to say a lot there. I think that the implication is good enough where she's like, that pissed me off. And then when you, as a, somebody watching the show, looks back and says, no, how can you gloss over this whole season that she's gone through when she had some pretty pivotal life moments to help shape her into a yeah. new person? Andy addresses it. He's like, it does seem like some women on the show come on, they find their voice. Sutton has found her voice. And She's independent now. She's always been clunky with how she addresses things. That's come to expect that. Like, we've come to expect that. So I get that part of it. But I think that she did herself a favor by bringing it back up. Because even before, it's almost like Kyle gets the last word in. Because she makes some snarky comment slightly under her breath, like to the rest of her couch. And Sutton doesn't really get a chance to rebuttal it because... Andy moves on to the next topic so fast. That's so a good I'm, point. I'm, I, I just, it's short attention span. So things, you know, I move on from things quickly. And when we come back to them, I'm like, all right, why are we doing this? That's fair. But, but hey, if it works, it works. Kyle's big issue with Sutton is that, you know, we have these deep conversations. And this is so funny because you could just hold a mirror up to Kyle and let her say this to herself. Like we have these deep conversations and then the camera turns on. It's like I'm talking to a different person. All I've ever seen in Kyle and Sutton interactions is Kyle be condescending. I've never seen anything different. No. There's always an air of just, I'm better than you when they're talking to each other. So for me, if there is a real relationship here, then it must be happening off camera, which means that when you're on camera, you are changing who you are, Kyle, not Sutton. We've talked to Sutton in interviews. We've texted with Sutton. Like We've known Sutton for a little while now. She's always that way. Yeah, She's never a different way, at least in our experiences, what we've seen on the show, any of those things. Kyle seems to be 15 different people when it serves her in a different direction. Like, that's always what I see out of her. So why would I think that Sutton's the problem when I'm watching you gaslight the shit out of her frequently? Yeah, so, I mean, Sutton's definitely not the problem. And we know that because even that nice, quote unquote, nice moment that they had in Spain when they were in that church, it was Sutton apologizing to Kyle. And it wasn't yes. a mutual apology. It was Kyle accepting the apology. And then as we talked about earlier, the confessionals are two different things. It's Sutton saying, you know what? I needed to do that. I felt really bad about the things that I said. I want to be a better friend to Kyle. And Kyle's just kind of brushing it off anyway. But this whole thing is going to go right over Kyle's head. Or she's just not going to address it. The big thing is that you are so different outside and you do not get to hold. And this is the problem with this fucking show. You don't get to hold everybody accountable for how you act off camera versus on camera. That's a good Just point. because you're a better friend off camera doesn't negate the shitty things that you do on camera. You're a different person. So if you want us to be friends, like you've got split personality all over the place. You're going to do this and that and this and another thing. You can't expect people to treat you all the same when you're a different person entirely on camera. And if you need proof of that, look at the text that she sent to Dorit the night before yeah. the reunion. That is off camera, Kyle. Let's just look at Dorit in a nutshell. You send that text message. You say that you're not as close and that Dorit's playing it up for the cameras. You say that you want her to be a closer friend. Like, none of those things add up. None of them make sense. They're all three different things. Stupid. It's frustrating, but you know what? Let's go to some questions and see what you lovely folks have to say about it. From AZ Bulldog Mom, will Anna Marie be back for season 14? I don't think so. Is she even still on the show right now? Uh, she had that one stupid comment that we didn't even talk about because of what we talked about at the beginning, but 
from Mike Bros. Oh, he asked a lot of questions. Hey, Mike Bros. How does this cast move forward? Kyle with her struggles, Dorit versus everyone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't know, but they're they starting... act like nothing's wrong and they just move forward. Yeah, nothing changes. They're also starting production in April, so they're getting ready to like gas back up. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the approach is this season. If I had to guess, they're going to lean heavy into Kyle living the separation life, if that's how you call it, where it's like, oh, what's she up to? I hope they dive into Dorit and PK. I don't see that happening. Yeah. Anne Marie, I don't think she'll be back. I, who, who the hell knows? I don't know. I do not know where we're going to go next year, but there's another season, so buckle up. From Steck33, is Kyle a bigger gaslighter than Shooter is? No. Mm. No. He's sneaky about it. Yeah, but she's she does it in a mean way, like a real way. Yeah, I do it for fun. Yeah, Shooter does it in jest, and then he he always smirks at the end to let me know, like, I'm just goofing. Yeah, just a goof. Yeah, it's just a goof. And I've also been dealing with it since I was 15, so, like, I'm used to it now. Yeah. We'll do one more. From Mary Had a Little, what is Dev's favorite Bravo show right now? I'll bring Dev into it. Uh, I believe she is thoroughly enjoying Summer House. I got ready to watch episode three, and she said this show is, or this episode's awesome. So she's really liking Summer House right now. She loved Miami. Uh, we both did. But uh, yeah, you know, hers, her favorite, favorite of all time is like OG Roni. I know that. Yeah. Um, she's a big Potomac fan, but OG Roni's her fave of all time. But right now, I'd say in the past few months, it has been Miami and Summer House. So this is like the dating game. We'll see what she says when she gets home. See if I'm right. I'll let you know next episode. But uh, other than that, we got another episode we got to tape here in a minute. So we should wrap this bad boy up. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't forget, get your tickets to our live shows coming up. We've got... The Union Stage in D.C. on May 3rd. The link is in our bio right now to purchase those tickets. Bring everybody you know. Somebody asked me a question in the DMs. They said, would this show be fun if I brought my friends who don't watch Bravo? I can tell you, and this is true, we've had multiple, multiple people at each one of our shows come up to us afterwards and say, I don't watch Bravo. I came here with my friend or I came with my girlfriend don't watch these shows at all. I had a blast. You guys are really entertaining. Like I had a great night regardless that I didn't know anything that was going on. So right. look, people have fun at the shows. We are also trying to plug ourselves right here, but at the same time, we've got nothing but good reviews from the people that have came to the show. Some of them don't even know what Bravo is. and They had a good time. So hopefully that clears that up. But May 3rd union stage DC, it's a Friday night. And then we've got June 14th in Boston, that is also a Friday night. That's almost sold out. So get those tickets ASAP. Oh yeah. Follow us on the socials, all that stuff too. Yeah, all that yeah. I don't do that. that anymore. No. <laughs> I don't plug that anymore. Just follow it. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna do one. Can you leave us some five star reviews? We don't ask for those a lot because I think it's annoying. But leave us some five star reviews because uh we've gotten some this this Erica Jane documentary, man. We've gotten three one stars in the past week because of this fucking documentary we have not watched. So if you love us, do us a favor. Even if you write in the review, doing this because Steele asked me to, that's enough for me. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. It's just the stars that count. Yeah, we love you. And uh, other than that, you got anything else? No. Rob Bowser out here. Bye.